What up, y'all? Franchise Sports TV back again with another video. And, um, shoot. Whew, I can't wait to move out of this place. But, anyways, um, shout out to, uh, Ticket TV. I almost forgot this even happened. I don't really follow, well, I can't say I follow college basketball, but I used to follow college basketball a lot back in the day. A lot. Not so much now. But I forgot this situation even happened. So if you guys are not aware, uh, I think it was yesterday, Illinois, University of Illinois basketball star Terrence Shannon Jr. Um, he was a guard. I think he, let me see something right quick. Let me see something right quick. So University of Illinois basketball um, guard, I think he's in the, supposed to be in the draft. Let's see here. Uh, so a little background on Terrence Sandin Jr. So he has some issues in uh, college, right? In the morning of early, early morning, and I mean the early morning, probably one o'clock, one morning, who knows? Saturday, September 9, 2023, following the prior day's Kansas-Illinois football game, Shannon allegedly penetrated a woman with his fingers at the Jayhawk cap. Months later, on December 27, Shannon was arrested on a warrant issued by Douglas County, Kansas, District Attorney for a charge of grape, um, taking it without consent, and the use of force against the victim. Shannon posted bail the following day and was suspended by the team. So that's what happened to, what happened with this kid. Uh, just a little background on Shannon. Terrence Shannon Jr. He was third team All-American AP 2024. Two-time first team All-Big Ten. Co uh, voted by the coaches two years in a row. First team All-Big Ten. Second team All-Big Ten. Third team all Big 12. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Big 12 All American freshman in 2020. Big 10 tournament. Uh, most outstanding player. Uh, he played for Texas Tech 2019, but he transferred to Illinois for his last two years. Um, from Chicago, standing six foot six, only 23 years old. Uh, he really didn't. He, um, He really didn't have any uh, scholarships at the end of his senior year. That's why he's 23 years old going to the draft, because I think he reclassified to the 2019 class and moved to the IMG Academy in Florida. Um, due to success there, he was recruited to Texas Tech, originally committed to uh, DePaul University, which was close by to where he's originally from, Chicago. But he went to Texas Tech, um, choosing the Red Raiders over DePaul, Florida State, Georgetown, and eventually Illinois, which he will go to. Um, as a freshman, he was a starting guard at Texas Tech. Season high, 24 points and 8 rebounds at 65-60. Overtime loss to DePaul. As a freshman, averaged 9.8 points, 5.1 rebounds. Sophomore season, did even better. Average 12.9 points a game, 4 rebounds, 1.4 assists, and 1.4 steals. His junior year, um, he was actually suspended and definitely due to eligibility. He was reinstated on November 17th after missing three games, averaging 10.4 points a game, 2.6 rebounds, and then he was transferred to Illinois. When he became a, uh, actually he was trying to uh, declare for the draft in the 23 draft. After his first season, but withdrew, and then he ended up graduating this year. But anyways, let's get to the what I really want to talk about. He does hold a, a couple of records at Illinois. Um, his last year, his last two years in Illinois, he did average seventeen point two and twenty three point three points a game. So going back to this whole situation with him, um, he was eventually suspended from the team because of this these allegations. But get this, no bar employees, security staff, friends, or roommates other than the accuser's best friend were interviewed. The police took the surveillance footage from the Jayhawk calf. However, 
The spot where the alleged crime took place occurred off camera. The accused, accuser drinking that night of the incident also varied between what she told the police and what was filed in her assault exam report. But the police did not seek receipts to verify. After completing the exam the following day, the victim and her friend returned to the Jayhawk cab one night after the incident took place. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You go back to that same spot the next day? What the hell? Why would you? Anyways. Kansas players Kevin McCullough Jr. and Hunter Dickinson as well graduate assistant Deshaun Hobson and Illinois player Justin Harmer testified that they did not witness Shannon interact with any woman that night of the incident. Good brothers. Following a series of back and forth legal actions between Shannon and the university on January 19th, Shannon was granted a preliminary injunction against the University of Illinois, thus making Shannon eligible to play. The university of eventually dropped this investigation with Shannon dropping his lawsuit as a result. On May 2nd, the DNA results were released through a hearing by Shannon's defense. Most of the DNA samples were unstable, and one sample contained a mixture of at least three males while ruling Shannon out. This girl, man. But we, 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 we really gonna get it on her. On June 7th, Shannon's defense successfully motioned to include evidence of a third-party incident committed by Artiro Morris, who allegedly assaulted a woman at a Jayhawk calf less than two weeks prior to the alleged incident involving Shannon. On June 10th, just a couple of days ago, jury selection took place with a jury of eight men and seven women selected to serve as 12 jurors and three alternates. During the trial, the victim testified that Shannon grabbed her wrist while previously she had said no such grabbing occurred. Story guard mixed up as her hands were occupied by a phone or drink. The victim's friend corroborated the grabbing despite not mentioning it previously testimony. On June 13th, Shannon was acquitted on both charges. The accuser, Maddie Neal, and her friend, Rachel Butts. <laughs> Rachel Butts. <laughs> or largely criticized for false claim on Shannon dropping his draft stock and then suspension from Illinois team where he's seen as a lock for all American selection. So that's a little bit on it right here. Oh my goodness, this woman. But there's more. There's more. Uh Going back to the trial, he was ordered last month to stand trial on two felony charges this week. Got a judge ruling. Yeah, we read that already. We're happy outcome, his lawyer said. He was one of the attorneys representing Shannon. Terrence, Jr., Terrence J Shannon Jr. finally got his day in court. We denied the allegations back in September on the date. We pledged that one day soon we will have our day in court. And we did. And we're happy with the outcome. And at the end of the day, I think the public at large owes Shannon Jr. a pause. Yes, they do. Cause they was gonna run him. They already ran his ass through the mud, lowered his draft stock, and it's still probably gonna be lower. Just this surrounding this, but this is the, this is the type of crap I do. I hate, and I hate it deeply. And this is just not a about a black man. This is any man. There's accused falsely accused of this type of stuff because this just ruins men's lives and it's even worse even worse i have to admit to this it's even worse when it's an african-american's life especially a do-gooder they really angers me man it really does um I'll keep moving i'm ready to pass all that let me see here I want to see, I'm trying to look up something right quick with what she did. Because what she did was entirely disgusting because her story was pretty much everywhere. And, uh, at a bat still, uh, he's probably going to go on the draft, be in the draft. And he, he's drafts like probably got lowered. Hope he gets lowered to go to Milwaukee. Um, but anyways, um, you know how it is. What what was it? Brandon Miller last year? 
how Malika Andrews brought that up about his whole uh, charges when he was at the University of Alabama. Oh, it's going to be the same thing with this guy, with uh, Shannon Jr. It's going to be the same thing. She's going to mention it. Malika Andrews is going to mention it when he's drafted, after he's drafted, even though he's found not guilty, charges acquitted, the girl was lying, all that in there, she's still going to bring it up. So, um, come on. I can't use this one. Hold on, y'all. As I was saying, Malika Andrews is going to still have a hit piece on this guy when he gets drafted. Even though everything in this case was fishy from the beginning. So, like I said, a jury found him not guilty on both courts of delivering after delivering for 90 minutes on Thursday, Shannon took to the stand Thursday while family members looked off. He denied the allegations came from an incident during the trip he had made to watch the Illinois-Kansas City football game last fall. In his words, he said he never touched, never grabbed, pulled over, did not happen, didn't even know what the woman looked like, he told the jury. Uh, he's six foot six, 225 pounds, projected to be a first round draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's keep reading stuff I already read try to look for what she did here it is here's what she did this is what the prosecution said about the 18 year old that accused him of this the prosecution closing arguments referred to the 18 year old woman as a typical student from a junior college who went with her friend she's a junior college she don't even go to the University of Kansas or Illinois who went with her friend to a bar despite liking neither crowds nor drinking, because it's what college students do. He referred to the other student, Shannon, as a star college athlete who might as well be the king of University of Illinois. When he wants something, he gets it. I don't like that tone. Shannon's defense attorney told the jury the case was a travesty saying science mandates that the Illinois player was not responsible for any crimes. The police had made no effort to find who it was. The woman described a tall man at the bar who put her, his hands under her skirt and violated her. Yeah. You know what? That right there already sounds fishy. Somebody who has basically most likely will be in the NBA next season. You think he'll risk his NBA career and his life for some grabbing pull? Will he really do this? I heard the kid was a good kid, kid from a good home. Oh my goodness. The woman said she left the bar and went home to search online the Kansas and Illinois football and basketball rosters. She identified Shannon from that process. Swaps was taken from the woman were tested and the forensic scientist said no male DNA was present. Among these pres uh, presented in the court was a December group message that involved a woman and her roommates and linked to an ESPN report on Shannon's suspension for Illinois men's basketball team following the grape charges was shared in the group chat, which included a message from someone in that group that read, got his ass, followed by two face emojis with dollar signs. For eyes. This despicable woman, I don't care how old she is, 18, 19, 20, 45, 55, 75, 85, 95. This despicable woman needs to be buried under the prison for false allegations and she basically it sounds like from my point of view she was looking for the come up and she knew who this guy was because he was a star at Illinois basketball team and she figured there was a way somehow either ruin this man's life or get a come up financially from this guy and it failed horribly because she's a stupid 
you know what. I ain't gonna say it here, but you can fill in the blank. And they wonder why men don't want anything to do with women anymore. Because stuff like this happens. She basically tried to set him up for failure without him even knowing. He's out here just minding his own business. And here she is. Playing around with her snot-nosed, stank-ass friends. In a group chat talking about goddess ass followed by two face emojis with a dollar sign. Congratulations to LeBron James for speaking out about this. Yeah, I gave LeBron James props. I'm glad he did. I'm really glad he did speak about this in his own way. But this right here boils my skin. The fact that she did this and she probably won't have anything coming her way infuriates me. And referring back to what I said before. On draft day, Malika Snot Nose, I hate black man Andrews, is going to get up on ESPN on draft day and talk about these allegations and not even mention a word about this snot nose bitch who did this. Not one word about this. All the details will be said. Not any of it. Anyways, I don't even care what the race of the woman is. Most likely we know what she is, but it doesn't matter. The fact that she did this, man, she needs to be buried under the prison for good. Yeah, I said for good. I'm not for good for a very long time. Because this right here was absolutely egregious. Props to the kid, man. I I I hope I hope he prospers in the NBA now because of this. Not saying I never wanted him to do, but I hope he does really prosper. Cause this right here, man, this is disgusting. This is absolutely disgusting. 